Yes, FinTech Abu Dhabi is underway, and I had a chance to speak with the Ripple CEO, Brad Garlinghouse, who weighed in on a number of issues around the sector and the company during our conversation. So I started by getting his view on some of the macro trends, driving momentum in Bitcoin and other major cryptocurrencies through the pandemic and where prices could go next. He said, of course, we've seen increased adoption here. There's new institutional support, positive regulatory developments in the crypto space as well. But he also said there's one other major trend that's really making him and others pretty bullish on cryptos over the long term. Listen in. Another macro trend that certainly people have talked about, I think, creates tailwinds for the crypto industry is global inflation. Uh, you know, here at home in the United States, you're seeing inflation that we haven't seen for decades. And when people are concerned about holding a fiat currency that might be inflating and thus devaluing, they're looking at how can I hold other assets that won't have that same uh, inflationary dynamics. So look, I, I'm not here to predict exactly where the crypto markets will be next year, but I think if you step back and take a long view, a five-year view, a 10-year view, these are real technologies that are fundamentally reworking how our financial infrastructure works. And I, I'm very bullish and very optimistic about what that longer term horizon looks like. So, you know, there is a lot happening in this space. We saw Bitcoin hitting an all-time high of almost 70,000 US dollars earlier on in the month. And despite falling below 60,000 in recent days, its year-to-date return has really outpaced even the most traditional hedges against inflation, such as gold. Interesting as well, while Garlinghouse is pretty bullish on the outlook for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, he says, not all coins are created equal. I asked him about Dogecoin, that's the cryptocurrency based on the viral internet meme that started as a joke back in 2013. He says, buyer beware. And that's because he says Dogecoin as a joke might not necessarily be good for the crypto market long term. Of course, the elephant in the room here, though, is regulation in this sector. And we know Ripple is at the center of this bitter dispute with the SEC. It uh, filed a lawsuit against uh, Ripple back in December, alleging that sales of its XRP token constituted the unregistered sale of a security. Garlinghouse said he's hopeful for a resolution next year, given the implications that this could have for the entire sector. Listen. We're seeing a pretty good progress, despite a slow moving judicial process in the federal courts. You know, clearly we're seeing good questions asked by the judge. And I think the judge realizes this is not just about Ripple. This will have broader implications. And I think that's a very good thing. I'm hopeful that, you know, certainly in 2022, there'll be closure here. But look, I, I think Seeing countries like the UAE provide leadership, I mentioned Japan and Singapore and Switzerland, you know, ultimately we need those things on a global basis. And if you look at the macro trend line for crypto regulation globally, you're seeing it, it it's moving very much in a positive direction. That's not to say there are countries like, say, China or India that have at times stepped back and had concerns. But in general, the direction of travel is very positive. So Ripple has some issues in the home market, which is why it's looking to the Middle East for growth. It just opened a new office here in the DIFC in Dubai. It plans to employ about 250 staff, and it's also teaming up with a local startup here called People to enable cross-border payments and tap into this really lucrative remittance corridor between the UAE and Saudi, worth an estimated $78 billion a year, Hadley. Really interesting space to watch.